Pediatric exams, I stand over the dog. I do it in a clinic at the hospital I work at. That's how I do it at a checkpoint. And I do it that way because that's what works for me. And I think that's what works for everybody else in this room because that's how we put a harness on. So then I'm familiar with what the dog's going to do when I put a harness on. Let's see how this works. All right. So we've all been in this position before. Everybody hear me okay? All right. So when we start at the bottom, remember we start at the toes, work our way up. If we start to skip, we're going to miss something. Be consistent with when you look at a dog. So we start at the bottom with the toes and work your way through, just feeling everything. Again, I'm looking for a reaction. I'm not looking for the anatomy of the dog. I don't need to memorize every bone here. I'm just looking for a reaction. So I'm just going to give a squeeze and work my way up, squeeze the feet, work my way up between the bottoms of the feet and the wrist are what are called the sesamoids. These are the little tiny bones that tendons insert on and they get sore in long distance racing. More times than you think, either because of a result of the booty or some other methods or other reasons. But when you touch this area and they react, that's what the problem's going to be. Okay, it's right in there. That's what we're looking for. Wrist, okay, when we move up the appendage, the wrist should go all the way back to be flush. Okay, that's a great range of motion of a dog's wrist. Now, with time and many miles in a dog, we might start to see some reduction in that with some older dogs. But as a general rule, a wrist should be 180 degrees back, okay? That's perfect range of motion. So that's going to take me right past the wrist. He did not react. Range of motion is perfect and fine. If, on the other hand, I do this and I can only get that far, 45 degrees, then I'm going to evaluate this wrist as to where that might, or the problem may lie. So I take that harness off or I'm working with him at a checkpoint and he reacts to me squeezing this wrist, doing this, then I'm going to start to look at this wrist as to what's going on. So again, we're, I'm just going to show you the exam and not how we treat things just yet. So looking at the wrist, complete 180 degrees. I go up the leg, I'm just feeling, I'm just seeing if he reacts in any way. We get to the elbow, elbow should come up to two fingers, meaning that when we flex this elbow, we should have a range of motion that takes me to two fingers width. He's perfect. If he doesn't, there's a problem in the elbow. Simple as that. The shoulder is always the challenge for people, and it's not as imposing as you think, in that there's only three shoulder muscle areas that are going to be a problem in a dog. And we do this again every time we take a harness off. We look at extension, we look at flexion, okay? And that's pretty much when we're putting a harness on, we're going to be doing those things. But we want to keep the leg in the plane it's supposed to be in. Leg's not supposed to be out here, it's supposed to go forwards and backwards. So normal range of motion should have good extension and it should equal the other leg. And then again, when we take it back, we're looking at a 90 degree angle here. He does not react. We've just done the whole front leg, all right? Uh, nice and simple. Excuse me. What yeah. did you say about two fingers? Can you take it one more? Yeah. When we flex an elbow, I'm isolating the elbow, I'm evaluating the elbow. When this leg goes up, easy. Easy. Let's try this one. Okay, when I flex the elbow, the amount this elbow should come down on itself is only two fingers wide. I should be left with this much width. And if it's more than that, there's an issue. That's all it is, two fingers. Okay. So we just done the front arm or the front limbs. Any questions? Before I pass out and fall over? Okay. <laughs> We're going to go to cures later. Okay. When we do his head, remember the head. There's a lot of problems that can come with the headset, okay, with their neck. Dogs should be able to flex nearly back to be able to touch their shoulders, okay. This is a very flexible dog. They should do this down and up, okay. Four different directions. Boom, 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 boom. Looking for a reaction. We're not looking for some anatomy lesson here. We're looking for a dog to react, and that's it, in a normal range. When you start to have shoulder and neck injuries, the range of motion decreases. And a lot of times I can use neck um, positioning as to a hint to which side the lameness is on. Okay. When we get to a hind limb, again, I'm doing it the same way. I like to stand over the dog because that's the way I've been doing it for ever. And then I can look straight down. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So the hind limb tends to be a little bit more imposing. And I don't know why, but many people just seem apprehensive about trying to diagnose a hind limb deal. Again, the hind limb's going to show us a head bob that goes which way? Down. down. All right, so we've got head bob that's going down. We're going to look, again, toes. Look in the webbing. Don't forget the feet. Look in here, okay? Look in the webbing, squeeze the foot, work our way up. 
tendons they insert on these little bones called sesamoids that become a problem in distance racing. People miss a lot. We're just touching this area right at the corners of this triangle. Who are these uh, sesamoids? Let me go up. Ankles the same way, three fingers on an ankle. Knee, we're trying to isolate one joint at a time as we go up. Ankle, knee, knee should be almost completely flexed. And then they should have good extension okay. and flexion. Again, it's looking for a reaction. Once we get a reaction, then we start to isolate. So that's an orthopedic exam. You don't find it hard to look for a small reaction when you stand with the back to your... I'm aware of what's happening. Their breathing changes, body position changes. And if it, if it happens once, I try to reproduce it. Paying more attention, for instance. But uh, usually, you know, if you're aware, you're going to pick it up. Just have to be aware. Any questions on those two parts? No, when we're doing a normal exam, we're looking for range of motion. Okay. When you start to bring the arm out like this, you're going to get a reaction more times than not that's artificial because they're not used to it. Now, if I suspect there's an issue, when I'm touching this dog and he's trembling, okay, I'm going to start to isolate it. And then I will start to bring it out some, looking for the pectoral muscle injury. But again, I'm looking for reaction. And when we have injuries like that, the dog's already not feeling right. And once I start messing with that area, they start to react to me. Then I'm going to start to work a little bit further. So a really good question with that kind of injury, how do we pick it up? They're going to show you some favor already. They're going to be trembling and tense when you get to that limb. And then it'll take you further as to your little bits of this to diagnose that as a pectoral injury. Okay. 